I'm Maria Menunos, and you're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. What's going on, everybody? How's everybody doing? Happy almost Valentine's yes. Day. I know, I can't believe it's here already. We just started 2020, and here we are. Oh, man. My guest tonight, beautiful Gwen Hollander, oh. actress and puppeteer, is here to talk about her new role on Showtime's na new hit comedy series, Kidding. Very excited to talk to you. Hey, Gwen. Hi. So excited that you're here. Thank you for having me. We have so much to talk about. We do. Um, thank you for making the drive. Where, where did you come from? I came from, like, less than a mile away. Oh, that's so perfect. So you're very Okay, welcome. Good. Yes, our studios are here in Burbank, everybody. So that's really, really convenient. Yeah. Some people come from very far away yes. just to talk to me, but I'm yeah. very honored that you're here to talk to me tonight. Oh. Thank you so much for being here. So let's dive in, shall we? Let's do it. So, so before we get into your awesome TV career, <laughs> let's talk about a little bit about you, shall we? Tell okay. our fans like where you're from, you know, where you grew up, where you studied. Okay, um, I'm from Miami, Florida. I grew up there, um, and I went to New World School of the Arts there for high school which um, also felt like a college because there's a college program too. So it was like the full experience. Um, and then I went to Boston Conservatory of Music to study mm -hmm. musical theater. Um, and I didn't stay. <laughs> I left. And it's not the school's fault. It's just I had already done this four-year conservatory mm -hmm. and I found that it, it felt kind of repetitive. Um, and so my parents actually said to me, they were like, do you want to just go to New York and I was like well that's crazy I'm I'm straight A Gwen I don't leave school um but it seemed like possibly the right thing to do I never would have the guts to do it now it's amazing mm -hmm. what you'll do when you're young enough that it doesn't occur to you that that you might fail at something yeah, New York is a scary place <laughs> very scary <laughs> um and a total 180 from Miami so but mm -hmm. I moved there when I was 18 wow um yeah <laughs> And my mom always used to tell people, she's like, I left her sitting on the floor of the studio <laughs> apartment surrounded by subway maps. Um, and, you know, you figure it out. It's mm -hmm. It really is incredible what you're able to figure out at that age. Um, when you're not coddled by when, Exactly, when you're not coddled. And then yeah. just, you know, yeah, I had to. I didn't know anybody, but I figured it out. Um, so I was there for a while and doing musical theater. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my husband and I came out here about five years ago, I want to say. And we've been giving this a try. And, and I love it here. I mean, I'm a Miami girl. So this the weather is... this agrees with me. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Well, your skin looks fabulous. Oh, so I can tell. thank you. Um, so you pretty much got into acting at a very early age. Yes. Did you always know that you wanted to be an actress? And why? Um, so I was always I was a I was a silly kid, mm -hmm. um, and I was I, I, when I was little I actually wanted to be a music therapist, which is so random. But I played mm -hmm. piano and I and I danced and everything, um, and I knew I wanted to be an actor. I was thirteen. And we went on a school field trip to see the touring production of Phantom of the Opera. Oh, that's my favorite musical. By I the way. lost my mind. Yeah. <laughs> I lost my mind. And it's some people are some people. There's like judgment about that mm -hmm. being my favorite musical, and I don't care. It's your favorite musical too, then. Yeah, I mean, it's because why do it's, people judge us? I don't know. <laughs> there's like an Andrew Lloyd Webber thing. I feel like, um, and I'm, but and I'm, you know, because there's a Cats situation yes. and like <laughs> I get it but I just was so blown away I had never been moved the way I was when I saw that show and I couldn't even really describe the feelings I had mm -hmm. and so that was the day I was like I'm doing this um and it kind of just went from there I started taking voice lessons and I really I buckled down that's awesome yeah so let's talk about kidding while you're here. Oh, okay. You know, just a little, just, just, you know, I'm while you're passing right, by. Yeah. Um, congratulations on the show. Oh, thank you. Very, very exciting. Guys, if you haven't checked out Showtime's Kidding, it's starring Judy Greer, obviously Jim Carrey, legendary. What, tell our fans, if they haven't seen the show, okay. what it's about and the character that you play. Okay. So uh, the show follows uh, Jim's character, Jeff Piccirillo, um, has a show that's kind of like a Mr. Rogers sort of show on like public television uh, called Mr. Pickle's Puppet Time. And he is uh, suffering a tragic loss. Mm -hmm. He uh, lost one of his uh, twin sons in a tragic accident. And so it's kind of an examination of like this public persona of his that's so happy and light and what happens when when like the actual man starts deteriorating mm -hmm. and how it shows up at work um and judy greer plays his wife mm -hmm. um ex-wife and Catherine keener is on it and she's amazing and frank langella and it's just like the most insane bunch of people it's a great cast it's a great cast now the character that you play yes his name is astronauter 
Yeah, her name. Her name. That's sorry. No, t- oh, I don't know. be. No, I don't did be. It. I'm sorry. No, don't be sorry. You guys will find out in a second. No, no, it's actually a, it's a plot point. <laughs> so yeah, everybody thinks that yeah. it's that it's a boy otter. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I play uh, Cheryl, who is one of the puppeteers on the show within the show, mm-hmm. and I puppeteer um, Astronaut Otter, who is an astronaut otter. <laughs> Um, who we find out is female. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. She's trans. She is transgender. She, I suppose she is. Yeah, that's yeah. A, that's a really interesting take on puppets. Yeah, <laughs> it is. I mean, that's a really. Now let's talk about that specifically. Okay. Was it hard breaking down a specific character like this? I mean, it's a pu- a transgender puppet on a show. Yeah. How was that? How were you prepared? For I mean, that? we don't really get into it um, in terms of the performance of the puppet because it's just literally a huge suit and like the voice is the voice. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of my preparation for the character, um, it was just figuring out what that voice was mm-hmm. and then figuring out how to maneuver in that suit, which is something I've never done before because yeah. I have done some puppetry, but it was hand puppetry and mm-hmm. I've never really done this full body thing. And the people that do that usually are like stunt performers or gymnasts or people that are very physically capable mm-hmm. of doing stuff like that. And I was just like, um, <laughs> okay, I'm huge. Yeah, yeah, I'm huge. <laughs> Guys, if you haven't met one, she's very, very little. Yeah. Um, that's must be really fascinating. It really is. It must be a different experience. It's a very different experience. It's been quite the education. And like, I feel like every time I put the suit on, I, I learned something new. That's good. Well, I'm going to get into that in a second. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my first question being, do you think it's harder being a puppet on camera or being yourself on camera? Oh, well, so the puppetry stuff is just so technical, mm-hmm. um, at least for the hand puppet people who are these puppeteers on this show are brilliant. Like mm-hmm. they are masters of what they do. They're like Jim Henson puppeteers. They're amazing. Mm-hmm. Um I don't know. I guess there's different things. I think there's probably something really liberating about not having to be myself. And at least for me, because my face isn't even showing. Right. So that's what's great is if you're going to like do a scene where Jim Carrey's there, I'm just like, I just get to watch (laughs) and no one is even seeing what my face looks like. Yeah, not starstruck at all. Yeah. And there was one day I was having a really hard day and I was like crying in the head. And I was like, no, it was just, and it was totally just, it was just a stressful day. And my, and I was like, oh, no one's even going to know. Yeah. (laughs) The benefits of being a puppet. That's on the thing. There was there were a lot of benefits in that way. That's a good way to look at it, though. Oh yeah. Always look at the positives. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Even though you cry inside your seat. I cry, but it's but you know what? I cry a lot. Hey, no I'm emotional. I I think that emotional empaths are very special to the world. Yeah. 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 Um, does the show you playing a transgender puppet? Mm-hmm. Does the show hit on a deeper level when it comes to trans issues, or is it not there yet? I think this was just kind of a. This was a moment because the show mm-hmm. is talk. The show is talking about some bigger themes um, and some darker stuff. This was just kind of one moment I think that showed this char- uh, Jeff Jim's character, mm-hmm. Jeff Piccarillo, take like wanting to make things a little bit more serious on the show. Got it. But yeah, I don't. They didn't really dwell too much on the trans thing. Okay. Um, it's just a very fascinating aspect. It really is. Yeah. It really is. And the fact that you get to play yeah. such a great character. It's crazy. It's kind of amazing. It's it's cool. That's, it's really cool. It's really cool. Guys, yeah. if you want to check out Kidding, it's on Showtime. Season 2 just premiered February 9th, 2020, which I still can't believe it is 2020. I can't. I can't. <laughs> now, before we move on, take me back to the audition for Kidding. What okay. was that like? interesting i mean this is such this project is so unique in so many ways and so when i first auditioned it was for another role Hmm. um and i came in they had us they gave us the lyrics to a song that ended up being in the show but they didn't give us a tune so they were like just make up any tune and i was like "Mm, okay yeah yeah, so so i ended up like kind of picking a a song from sesame street and laying that tune onto it clever um thank you (laughs) i was just like i don't know and you know you get it the day before and you got to figure it out and Mm -hmm. then so i went in with a puppet we have a couple puppets at home because we're those people. Um, <laughs> not creepy at all. Not creepy at all because my husband is a puppeteer as well. That's so cool. Yeah. That's really cool. It's very cool. Um, so, yeah, so I went in and I did the scenes and I did the song with the puppet and then they had me come back for this role for the astronaut or thing and then I had to come back again and when I came back the last time, I brought a puppet and they gave me, they gave all of us, all of us puppeteer type people, a bunch of characters to choose from and we had to prepare all, so, like, I prepared um, 
the which is the one that I ended up doing. Oh, on Wii, the hmm. the ba- there's yes, a yes, French yes. baguette. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> and I decided I would do that one because I thought the sides were really fun and Michel Gondry was there who is very French and I remember being like this might have been a mistake <laughs> because my French accent is terrible and I sound like Pepe Le Pew. Um so I think this is why you got the role now. Maybe he was like, <laughs> "I want that cartoon skunk on the show." There you go. <laughs> yes. Were you nervous? Like, how are you at auditions? I know that Terrified. actors are very different. Okay. Terrified. Yes, I'm sure. Um, only because I feel like it has so little to do with what we actually do. Yes. It, it's so unnatural. Mm-hmm. Um, I have to do a lot of self talk, um, and really like you know breathe and be like, just <laughs> this is this is fun. It's fun, right? It's fun for you. You get to act, right? It's fun. It's not fun, no, but yeah. I try to, I try to, you know, have a paradigm shift and make it a fun experience. It is very nerve wracking. Yeah. I, I, I get it. I understand. Yeah. Now, when you first got the part, when you got the call, mm-hmm. how did you feel? And what was the first thing you did? I was shocked. I was on my way to a tap class, which oh, I take exciting. with my friends. Okay. So I was on my way there and I was shocked because I really had thought that it was not happening. Um, and it also interfered the dates with marriage material that we were supposed to shoot. Oh, which we're going to talk about yeah. in a second. Um, but so that was also my, so I was like, oh my God, yay. And then I looked at my calendar and I was like, oh my God, no. Oh. Um, so I was, so we, and it actually was very complicated. We had oh. to do a lot of finagling and I, more, more than anything, I was just feel. I was like, I'm going to, I don't want to screw anybody over. Mm-hmm. Like yes, I was worried about, um, I just wanted to make everything work for everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, so then I guess the first thing I did was walk into my tap class and be like, you guys i'm gonna play an otter <laughs> with jim carrey yeah yeah that's just so exciting yeah and yeah speaking of that yeah. you get to work with some amazing people in the show yes. i mean jim carrey like i said legendary mm-hmm. genius yeah um judy greer who i absolutely love who has been in literally everything. everything what has this experience been like for you and you know everybody that you've mentioned earlier in the show what has it been like for you working with these people i mean it's surreal i just keep saying that's really the best word i can use to describe mm-hmm. it it's surreal because you grow up watching jim carrey you yeah. know it's he's larger than life mm-hmm. it's so it's insane to even just look at him in person and be in the same room and then to watch him do what he does and what he does better than anybody on the mm-hmm. planet um and i have this unique vantage point where i'm in my head and, and I'm, you can cry and watch <laughs> i can him. cry i can watch him and i'm like I, I don't have to i don't have this the pressure of having to you know yes i'm really just getting to watch and mm-hmm. it is every single person i've worked with on this show every director it's it still doesn't feel like it could possibly be real why do you think a show such as kidding is so important right now okay so i've also i've talked about this a lot too mm-hmm. i think it's really interesting to look at the like um juxtaposition of this children's show with puppets and everything and then this kind of darker Mm -hmm. subject matter and the fact that on the show you know last season he wants to do a show about death and he wants to address it and they're like we can't do that that Mm -hmm. will terrify the children when the fact is that's the best thing Mm -hmm. to do because children are going to deal with death and this is a way to talk to them about something really scary in a way that they understand and in a way that you're not talking down to them. You're treating them with respect and sharing with them facts of life. Mm-hmm. And like I keep also saying, um, I know Sesame Street is either in the process of introducing or has already introduced a puppet whose mom is in rehab for an opioid mm-hmm. addiction. Yes. And they have a, I know they have a puppet with autism. Mm-hmm. And like, that's amazing. Yeah. Because... Those kids are going through those things. So yes. rather than letting them feel alone, and same thing with this transgender thing, like if there is a kid who's experiencing like gender dysphoria or something mm-hmm. and they don't know what it is, they just know they feel scared and, and, different. and different and wrong. Mm-hmm. And if they see something like that, then that gives them a name for whatever feelings they're having and makes them feel a little less alone. So mm-hmm. I think that's incredible. And I think it's a really interesting thing to look at. No, I love that. Like you topped on, uh, said on the top of the show, you know, when your mom dropped you off in New York, it's yeah. like this, this, it's not a coddling thing. It's yeah. like, you know, just these kids need to learn a lot of these aspects of life because this is what life is going to handle. Yeah. Them. And they're so much more resilient. I think than people think kids can actually process this stuff and move forward much more easily than we can. I, think. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Um, on a lighter note, yeah. when the show isn't filming, like when the cameras aren't on, 
You guys are puppets. <laughs> Jim Carrey's there. Yeah. What is it like? It must be a blast. It's hilarious because the, also the, the great thing about all these puppeteers, they're also amazing. They're very good actors. They're mm -hmm. amazing improvisers. So you've got the puppets improvising with each other. You know, there's like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich that I think we met. So there's like PB and J. They're <laughs> improvising with each other. Catherine Keener's there improvising with them and talking to the puppets. Yeah. Like not even necessarily because you do start to forget that there's a person there. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, this is a jelly sandwich that I'm talking <laughs> to um it's amazing and yeah, yeah so between two it's just it's a lot of laughs yeah yeah no. okay now shifting a little bit okay. um because not only have you done tv you're also in film you've made a name for yourself with the lead role in the musical comedy short marriage material mm -hmm. i want to hear all about this because okay. you have a background in musical theater yes, yes. so Obviously, that helped you in this role. Yeah. Now, what is the show about, the character that you play? So I play uh, a woman named Leah, and it's about... Uh, so Leah has been very unlucky in love and has had a lot of failed relationships. Mm -hmm. And at the top of the film, she um, is proposing to her boyfriend in a rather unorthodox fashion. Not here in Los Angeles, apparently. Yeah, I guess not. <laughs> um, but he says no, mm -hmm. and that's kind of the last draw for her. So she checks into uh, a school that's like in a Academy for they call it Yenta Feldman's uh, retreat for the late blooming bride. Mm -hmm. So it's a place where um, women go that are unlucky in love to learn to be marriage material. You know, to learn to iron. Oh, stop! And care for the men <laughs> and how to be a good spouse. So it's a very dark comedy. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, like that. They're like a Stepford wifey kind yes. of quality. Um, so yeah. Now the most that. important question that I have, Gwen, sure. is do you know how to iron? No. Oh, God. Terrible oh, No, I mean, I know how to, like, do... No, I'm the worst. You're I know how to, like, do that, but I don't know how to, like, arrange the thing so that I can get to all the wrinkles. <laughs> no, neither do I. So, I mean... Yeah, but you're a woman, so you should know you're how to right. do this. You're right. I should get on it. Oh, gosh. Failure. Yeah. Now, you are married. I am. Because you, you said that your husband was also a puppeteer. Yes. Now... In terms of this film, mm -hmm. if you had proposed to your husband mm -hmm. and he said no, uh -huh. on a deeper level, do you think that couples couldn't work through something like that? It depends. I guess it would depend on what the no was about. Mm. If the no was about, like, I don't want to be with a woman who would, who would, you know, dare to propose to me because that gender role is too strong for me. Or if it's like they said no because they're like, I just don't want to be married to you. So I guess it would depend. Right. Um, although either way, those would both be bad. Yes, I <laughs> either agree. one of those things, I'd yes. be like, all right, well, I'm going to take my leave. Uh, thank you. And you're going to go to your women's camp. Yeah, I'm yes. going to go to my camp. <laughs> yeah. Now, this film is doing very well. Yeah. It's won several awards. Yeah. What, what awards has it won? So we were just at the Florida Comedy Film Festival, and we won, like, the best of the whole festival. Congratulations. Um, the grand prize. Thank you. And best director and best actress and best cinematographer. Look at you. Um, it's like a mini yeah. Oscars. It was, and it was on Oscar night. So I was like, basically. But you were at the Oscars. But these are, these are Oscars. At the, Oscars. At yes. the Marriott in Boca Raton. Yes. You technically won an Oscar. I, I did. I'm just yeah. going to say that. Just that's going. That. Yeah, that's yes. what I'm going to say. Um, thank you. You're welcome. Um, Congratulations. And, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Um, and yeah, we won a, so there, we've been in a bunch of festivals this year, so it's won a bunch of things. And we were, because uh, this was a student film from AFI. Wow. And we so we were a finalist for the Student Academy Awards. It's unbelievable. This just is not what any of us were expecting. You never know what you get, what you, what the final outcome is going to be when you, never. When you take a project like this. No idea. And it's like I said, congratulations Thank for you. doing so well. Thank you. You guys, if you want to check out Marriage Material, it is on Fox Searchlight Shorts now. You could literally watch it like right you now. You could watch it right now. Which is very exciting. It's a 25-minute film. Yeah, 25 minutes. Um, so guys, check it out if you're a musical theater nerd or if you just like singing and want to see somebody get <laughs> declined in a marriage proposal, uh, check that out. Yeah. Um, now, we are a little short on time, but I do want to get into your musical theater experience. Okay. Uh, very, very quickly. Sure. So you said you got into it at the age of 14. Mm-hmm. What have been some of your favorite roles that you've played? My favorite roles have been uh, Eponine and Les Mis, mm -hmm. favorite. I love that show. Uh, love it. Belle and Beauty and the Beast, oh. which I've gotten to do twice. Congratulations. Thank you. So much fun. Um, and I love, I don't know if you know, do you know the show You're in Town? I do yeah. know the show. Yeah. It would remind me of 
you know, like the puppet that you're doing in kind of like hitting. Oh, yeah. I Almost. mean, it definitely it, like it has and material. Uh, yeah. Well, in Avenue Q, too. I also Avenue did Q, Avenue yes. Q, um, which I also love. Yes. Avenue Q and You're in Town. Mm-hmm. I played Hope in You're in Town and Kate Monster in Avenue Q. It's, so those funny. would probably be some of my favorites. I Do think. you have any dream roles that you that are on your mind? For theater? Yeah. In the atmosphere right now? That's the thing is like I one of the reasons I felt okay leaving New York is that Belle and Eponine were like two of the big ones and I was like oh I did them yeah <laughs> there are still some I would love to play the baker's wife and in into the woods yes that's a good one. um yeah so there's a few floating around out there but I feel really lucky that I kind of did the ones that I wanted to do when I was a child yeah um but yeah, I love musical theater. I, I miss it, and mm-hmm. I would still like to do it. And obviously, all of this musical theater experience, you know, Avenue Q, you're in town. Yeah, has, it's all kind of coming into play. Exactly. has definitely propelled you and accelerated your career, because look at where you are now. Uh, very strange. It's, you never, yeah. it was not, again, you don't know what to expect. Exactly. Always full, it's coming for us a full circle, though, I for you. It is. That's actually, that's great. Yeah. That's really great. Now, I do want to touch on your writing very quick, because okay. you are a very talented person. Aww. You're a very lovely person, by the oh, way. Thank you. Um... You've written several shorts. Yeah. How has writing been for you? Do you still write? And do you think that it helps you in your craft of acting? Yeah, I do think it helps. Um, I do still write. I get, um, I love to collaborate. So when I, when I'm in a situation where I'm like, oh, I have to write something by myself, I tend to psych myself out a little Mm -hmm. bit, but I love to write. And I mostly write sketch for the most part, I would say, because that's what I, I grew up watching SNL, like from a very young age, probably too young of an age, honestly. (laughs) Um, but I love sketch comedy Mm -hmm. and I think it's just such a fun way to like get in, get some laughs and get out, you know? Um, but yeah, I am still writing, and, and I definitely think it helps, because I also, if I'm writing, I'm probably writing for myself. Yeah. Um, I'm probably writing so that I can do something. So yeah, it's definitely helped me you know, develop my sensibility and figure out what I want to do and what I think is funny. Yeah. So yeah, I think it all ties together. Yeah. When you wake up in the morning, yeah. what inspires you? What makes you get out of bed? My dogs. <laughs> oh, uh, you have dogs? I mean, I have two dogs. I mean, uh, they literally make me get out of I bed. I mean, I'm sure. So I'm they, sure your husband does, too, to iron, yes, remember? They get to, I, have to, I will yes. have to learn to iron. <laughs> um, and uh, they literally get me out of bed. But also, they are my babies. Oh. Yeah. If you weren't acting, what would you be doing? I think I'd be doing something with animals. That's amazing. Yeah, I don't know what it would be because I'd have to go get a bunch of other, you know, degrees. Yeah. But I thought like, <laughs> a, a, like how to be a marine biologist or something, that would be amazing. Wow. Okay. I mean, that I would take a lot of extra schooling. Yes, of I'd have to go back to school yes. forever. And you'd have to learn how to swim, I, I assume. Yeah. Um, Maybe? Yeah, probably. <laughs> I guess that's part of it. Just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Gwen, this has been awesome. <laughs> Thank this has you. been awesome. Now, tell our fans like what you have coming up and where they can find you. Um, so, uh, kidding, of course. Yes, of um, course. And Future Man, I, did, uh, I had done an episode of the show mm-hmm. Future Man on Hulu a few uh, years ago, and then I just did a second episode. So that um, will come out whenever they drop that. It'll of be course. sometime this year. We never know. We never know. <laughs> um, and, oh my gosh. Oh, and also my husband and I, uh, with a couple of other friends, produce a show at Rockwell Table and Stage called the I love Ast- yeah the oh, yeah. yeah I've done a lot of shows there oh wow um, called the Astonishing Show Show it's magic and puppets okay of course it is um it's weird and wonderful that sounds amazing and we have our next show on March eighth but we do it every couple months at Rockwell okay. so uh, I post about it on Instagram so. Um, do you want me to say that stuff? Yes, like, yeah. please. Tell us, tell right. fans where yeah. they can keep up with you. My Instagram is Gwenstagram811. That's clever. Thank you. <laughs> um, and then on Facebook, I'm just Gwen Hollander. And so, yeah, any of that stuff about the show, I'll post. Um, with, with a name like that on Instagram, you need, you need to use it more. I know yeah. we talked about like when we weren't filming that you don't really use Instagram. Well, very I much. I do. I use it. I'm just not. I'm not. You're good not good at, at it. it. It doesn't occur to me to put like I have to. Rem- I have to like write down in my planner like post something today. Yeah, yeah. You know, I just did. Some- <laughs> <laughs> post something. Yeah, put I don't it in your know. iPhone calendar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's exciting. That's so exciting. Yeah. Gwen, thank you so much for taking the thank time to you. talk to me today. Thank uh, this you for is having me. a blast. You guys, if you want to see my new friend Gwen Hollander, you can check her out <laughs> on Showtime on the new hit comedy series, Kidding. Also, if you're here in Los Angeles, check out, what was the name of the show? The Astonishing the, Show Show. The Astonishing Show Show at Rockwell Table and Stage. Yeah. We'll see you guys next time. Happy Valentine's Day. Bye, guys. Bye. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> 
The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.